Plan B. This movie is legitimately the worst thing I have ever watched. Now that's saying something coming from me, because I usually watch bad movies here and there, because, you know, I love watching terrible things and putting myself through that, but this actually made me regret every single decision in my life that led me to this point. So I ask myself, how is it that others are out there having fun with their friends, and I'm sitting here watching Plan B on my birthday? Like, honestly, it's just kind of sad, but no matter, I made the sacrifice, I did the time. So now, since I've had to watch this, you guys all have to see this too. So now, let's dissect this movie and get right into the news. For the plot, I'm gonna be real honest with you guys, I have no idea what the hell was going on. The storytelling was just so, so bad. I can attempt to give you a run by of what happened, but this is just going downhill from here. <laughs> Disclaimer, this is gonna be filled with Plan B spoilers, I'm sorry about that, you have been warned. I know this is worse than spoiling Endgame, but yes, once again, spoilers ahead. So the movie starts off with the main character Bing and his friends. They're all just chilling out, having a good time, you know, collecting nectar. So then they go back to the hive and make honey with the nectar they got. And they see that their original queen was banished and replaced by this vile creature. Queen Akif. And this queen is a honey-hungry sociopath, so that's that. She tells her bee slaves that they're pollinating wrong and they need to just wreck the flowers, absolutely destroy the flowers with facts and logic. Take no survivors but the honey. Bing and his bee friends go out to the flowers and Bing tries to collect nectar the new horrible way, but instead of going sicko mode on the flowers, his friends sort of slack off. All the bees go back to the hive and Bing finds out that the queen's evil sidekick made more honey than him, so... Now there's like a contest where Bing has to make more honey than the evil dude. So they go out to collect nectar once again, and someone who made this film decided that it was an excellent plot point, absolutely marvelous, like Einstein, genius right here. They decided that the bees should collect nectar from flowers on a picture of George Washington. So while they're there, a toad sister snatches one of- <laughs> Did I just say that? God. The toad snatches one of the bees. And even though it looks like this bee got murked, absolutely decimated, no one really seems to care and they just sort of forget about her or him. I don't really, I don't really care. I mean, one character literally asks, do you think they're okay? And the other just sort of shrugs it off. So they get back to the hive and Bing brings along this chick Bonnie that he found on the corner or something to come stir nectar. And this time they have a lot of honey, but the evil bee takes it from them. Bing is so close to revolution, he can feel his blood pulsing. He is ready to just go absolutely feral on these peasants. He calls the queen unfair and then he becomes subservient to her again and the movie hopes the audience forgets about it. A romance between Bonnie and Bing starts developing, but then it just dies 30 seconds later. So that's a great love story. The main bees deal with abuse from the queen for the rest of the movie, basically. And Bing's friends come close to death like you think they're dead because they got trapped in the garbage can, but then they just miraculously show up a scene later and they never explain how they escaped, like probably had to make a blood sacrifice, who knows. So finally, the revolution happens. There's a trial scene between the evil queen and the queen who was banished. The evil queen got accused of poisoning bees and she pretty much just admitted to it because, you know, can't have the movie run on any longer, so let's make her say, so I tried killing people. What's the big deal? After that, the movie has a happy ending because the good queen is back in power and the evil one was sentenced to unalive. Good story. The design can pretty much be summed up in one word. Terrifying. Absolute nightmare fuel. Like a lot of horror movies nowadays lack originality and that pizzazz, you know, that spark that makes a film truly spooky. But this... <laughs> This has potential. If it was marketed as some sort of abstract, creepy pasta footage, I would honestly give it a pass, maybe even like an SCP video. But for this to be a children's movie, no. The answer is no. Just no. So, when you're designing 3D models for characters of the same species, it's understandable that you could have a hard time making the characters look different. Like Ratatouille, for example, half of the characters in that thing are copy and paste. With this movie, the characters do look different, but not in a good way in the slightest. So before I show you how badly this movie messed up in its entirety, let's look at the bee movie. The bee characters are all clearly bees and they still manage to look different. This is done by use of different face shape, body shape, hairstyles, hair colors, eye color, glasses or no glasses, 
clothing choice, you get it. These are all things that you would probably think to consider changing when making characters look separate from each other. But what did Plan B do? Well, you see, they just sort of stretched out certain model features to horrific lengths. And it produces these hot looks on screen. This is the protagonist V, it's the most normal looking model because it's what the creators probably started with. The eyes are creepy, but that's a constant throughout the rest of the characters. This is Thoughty. The face is too skinny for the eyes, and yeah, it looks like a bug, but when you're animating bugs, you at least, you at least try to make them look less gross. This is obesity. <laughs> they just made this character real fat and it has no character development, it's just always eating. This character right here has long jaw. Joe Swanson or the Crimson Chin do not even compare, like they are not even on the same level. B, S tier, Joe Swanson, F tier. Thumbnail character, absolute embodiment of evil. 3D modeler, how evil do you want it? Writer, yes. So again, the characters look different, but they look absolutely disturbing and terrifying like sleep paralysis demons. So now that we've run over character design, let's get into the good, sweet, delicious nectar that is the personality of these characters. Every single character lacks any depth to their personality and they have one personality traits that builds up their entire self. The one exception to this would be the protagonist because it's the most fleshed out character because it's the only one they had to put thought into. For the supporting characters, however, what do they do and what are they like? Thoughty doesn't do anything but act like a diva. Most of her screen time, if not all of it, consists of her complaining about things being out of style or not trendy enough. You're like kidding, right? Daisies are so last century. What if someone sees me? She tries to use slang terms or the terms kids these days are using, but this was written by a grown man, so <laughs> this clearly didn't turn out well. I almost didn't make this video because Watching this character on screen evoked such an anger in me, such a raw anger, that I almost game-ended myself. It's really amazing to me how this thing seemed like a good idea to the writers, like the character's sole personality trait, the sole purpose of the character is to whine. Disturbing, a floral tribute to George Washington. <laughs> That's all that happens. They just whine. I know there's a point in the plot where they get eaten by a frog and you think that they're dead, like Gonzo, but instead of being sad about this, it's like, it feels like God himself came down, answered your prayers, while simultaneously giving you a million dollars. Here's this gremlin, I have no idea what purpose it serves other than to scream. I miss Pisto! <laughs> Obesity B, again, just eats. And the evil queen is just scary. That's her personality trait, scary. Like there is not a single scene of this garbage film that I can think of where I didn't feel violated by looking at her. Everything from the teeth, the creepy overlooking, the dances, the screaming, there's nothing, nothing good to be had here. And in conclusion, these characters have less depth than a Wattpad fanfiction, but are just as scary as one. Oh god, where do I even start with this? This thing is just... It's just so bad. I mean, clearly, you can see this. You don't need me to point it out. I don't think there's a way I can categorize what's wrong with this animation, so... Since everything is terrible, let's go over some Oscar nominee best animated film moments that I noticed. Here we have B models straight up clipping through the box. Absolutely no effort to move the limbs in a way that shows collision. A plot point was supposed to be established here, but the animation goes so fast that you can't even tell what's happening. This just makes me uncomfortable. It took me 20 solid seconds to understand that the glitchy flashing here was the wing animation and not a glitch in the recording. Also, Queen O'Keefe wiggles too much. Please put me out of my Missouri. <laughs> the bee just stops in midair. It's supposed to be a secret. Shh. This is just like an awkward jump cut, like some sort of poorly edited video. Psst. Make honey. This is another horrific wiggle dance. Blossoms. Forget honey production targets. Live as bees were meant to. Okay, they were trying to convey a change in facial expression here, like a sense of ease, but there was no effort to even adjust certain features to get that look. In fact, I don't even think the models will support that look. So it just ends up where the character looks like they're astral projecting. These flowers look fake in comparison to the other ones, but they are, uh, they're real. 
here's the most awkward pause you will ever see in your life. She's a heck of a bee. Bing likes funny pavlis honey. Look at it, glistening, pure gold. Okay, this shot is just genuinely terrifying, like actually disturbing. I'm not exaggerating this, look. Look at this. Glistening, pure gold. I'm including this in animation, but I'm not sure if it was the animation department who made up this idea. So the queen wanted to expand the hive in the plot, that's the thing that she wants, and she achieved that. So the animators didn't increase the diameter of the hive, they didn't like increase the number of bees in there, they just literally duplicated and stacked the hive model on top of itself. This is a five second long shot that has literally nothing but a wall. This is a series of shots that lasts 30 seconds that's just of the characters uh, snoring. And here's an example of really, really poor lighting. So overall, the animation is pretty spastic. There's a lot of moments where things new across the screen or do the opposite and stop mid-motion. And let's never forget the models that just clip through other models. It's, it's not too hot. So briefly, I just want to talk about the background and how it's completely unfitting. The foreground is composed of very few low-res textures and terrifying bees, while the background is just a two-dimensional work of art that's completely unfitting. While talking about the background, I should bring up how the movie takes place in Washington. Whoever was in charge of this decided that every other shot should include an iconic building in Washington. So this of course causes things to not make sense because the bees go from the Lincoln Memorial to the Washington Monument in 0.5 seconds and from the Washington Monument to the Capitol Building in another 0.2 seconds. It's really sad because the backgrounds themselves are okay when looked at independently from the film, but it's just they weren't put to good use. Yet another thing I should bring up would be the horrible lighting disconnect. The backgrounds in this are generally very bright and cheery, while the lighting is gloomy and dark. And there doesn't appear to be a light source. Or, when you do see a defined light source, it's coming from the wrong way and lights up too little of the model. Like, I could recreate this effect right now in SFM. Here's a void, here's a model, here's a light. I can add a green screen behind my model, but you'll see it doesn't change the lighting. Now, if I add a plan B backdrop, I basically just made the movie. The sad thing here is that, no matter what program they were using to create the movie, this should have been a really easy fix, like it could have been more bearable if they just brought in another light source, like that. <laughs> Yikes. The dialogue is very bad. The end, you can go home now. I could show you some horrible examples of dialogue right now, but that would spoil the voice acting part of this video. Because half the reason why I can't stand the character speaking is due to the terrible voices. So here I'm going to talk about some plot elements that were just written horrendously. So, the movie is about bees, right? Bees. Bees extracting nectar from flowers, bees doing whatever, and someone somehow thought to themselves, you know it would be, you know it would be fantastic? Absolutely juicy for this plot. Presidential history lessons. I have no idea how this was a thought. How did this happen? How did we get here? Like, I know I'm saying how, but I probably should be asking why. Why? Why did this happen? Why are we here? The first time they go weirdly off topic about a president is when the whining bee praises George Washington for choosing democracy. We do have a choice. Like Washington, you know? He could have been king, but he chose democracy. This bee also had a choice, and frankly, it should have chosen death. The second weird time a president is brought up, I say weird time as if there was an appropriate time, but the second time I noticed is when the bees are outside of the Lincoln Memorial, the love interest, Bonnie, decides to go and say that the queen is evil and being pushy. So then she ties this into Lincoln ending slavery, for humans in America. Monument dedicated to Abraham Lincoln, the president who ended slavery. So speaking of this bee, right here, she feels the short-lived romance plot in the story. And this was somehow written worse than Fifty Shades. I have no idea how it could be, but it was. Oh, Bonnie, I like your spunk. It's fun hanging out, even if we are kind of different. Yeah, we are different. I did not know you could screw up so badly to the point that you kill a romantic relationship in five seconds. By far the thing that I find to be written the worst is Queen O'Keefe. Her character is terrible. I don't want to call it a character, it's a steaming garbage pile worse than any sort of OC you could come up with on DeviantArt, but we'll call her a character. 
There was a point in the movie where the writers went, Hey, you know what? Akif is just evil. That's it. Evil. There needs to be more to her. Let's give her some depth, some good development, and make her have some sort of struggle or relatable feature. And then we get this. Mummy said I would never be queen. She said I was too nice. No one thinks I'm too nice now, Mummy. This whole thing is beyond brutal. The audio. This is arguably the most insufferable aspect of this, and this may be contradictory, but it's also the most entertaining. As I was listening to this thing, I questioned my sanity, but I also questioned what the directors must have said to the voice actors to get them to produce these demonic chants. <coughs> like, I swear, the script must have said, squeal into mic, light yourself on fire, and yodel. I just, I don't know how to describe it. There's a lot of brutally weird voices. This Molly Crewy won't. The trash. It's like alive. He's like licking trash. I can see that. Oh, honey. No. Silence. I don't care how you get nectar. And don't even get me started on this character. This little gremlin right here is the bane of my existence. We just got to bed. I'm so tired! Ah, uh, yes! Now, when I talk about the voice acting being bad, I don't mean to entirely blame the VAs for producing such disturbing noises. The fault is also in the hands of whoever gave the lines to them. Generally, you can't just read off of a script separate from someone else and expect tone to make sense and flow. Like, the line delivery is bad, but the director could have simply told them to read the words and that's it, one take and done. The audio editing makes this all so much worse because you can hear the spit of the voiceovers as if this is an ASMR channel or something. There are no fade outs, it's just very sharp sounding. This is less noticeable if you're watching this without headphones, but when you put headphones on, it's like you're forced through a portal that leads you directly to the bowels of hell. And for some reason, this hell plays generic plan B music non-stop. In conclusion, there are absolutely no redeeming qualities to this movie, it completely lacks originality, and the only original idea I've seen from this movie is when the toad started barking like a dog. The sole reason for this movie's existence is to take advantage of confused old people trying to buy the B movie for their grandkids and then they just end up stumbling upon this thing. There is no purpose beyond that. So I sentence this to the dark, frightening place of Robloxian High School. That wraps up this rendition of The Earth Should Have Exploded in 2012. I'd like to take this time now to show you all some cool fan art submissions I got. I really enjoy all these because I just love the style differences and general feel to them. Say fantastique, I love it. Thank you. I'd also like to thank my patrons for supporting this channel. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Oh, every night's like a day's. But oh, I feel it raise as I know I'm running late Let's wait just one more day I know I'm running Away from moments What am I becoming? I guess something's broken